Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video, Joanna did a number of rescapes in our fish room, three to be exact, and I really liked the way they turned out. Some of them were major projects and other ones not so much, but they were incremental improvements. So I wanted to show you those few tanks that she redid, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, so this is the top 75. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you will know that we put Roger and Ruby in here. They were the Midas cichlids. They had a lot of babies, and unfortunately we lost Roger. It was very sad. What happens is the fry eat off the mucus secretions of the parents, and sometimes when they do that, the parents will stop eating. Roger stopped eating, and we couldn't get him back to eating again. We separated him, got him into a different tank. He just wouldn't, he would not eat. Ruby's doing fine. She's in a 75 gallon on the other side of the fish room. In fact, you're going to see her not in a not too distant future here when we show you what we did with that 75. Uh, the babies, we sold some, we BAP'd some, we had to call some because with 800 babies, there's just, there isn't a market for that many fish. So we're going to go ahead. It, it just seemed like maybe a 75 gallon wasn't the best use for one female Midas cichlid. So we moved her and now we're going to use this tank for other fish that we have in quarantine right now. Fish you haven't seen before. So Joanna's going to go ahead and get started on this tank. We're going to put in some wood. We're going to plant it because the fish will allow us to plant it. So stay tuned. We're going to see what she does so this with is it. the 55 gallon Geophagus Tapajos tank. There are four of them in this tank as well as a random hybrid peacock that I really like. And when we Originally took the Pelagrini out of the 75. He was in there getting along fine with the other inhabitants. And I needed a place to put him when the red, when the uh, Midas cichlids were going in there. And I knew he'd get beat up in the 75. So I stuck him in here. He's been getting along fine with everybody else. But this tank needs a little bit of help. It was originally set up just to allow the Geophagus Tapajos to breed. They've bred for us a lot. We've gotten a lot of babies from them. And it's I think it's time to transition this tank a little bit to something more, uh, a little bit nicer to look at. So if they breed in here, great. If they stop breeding, I'm okay with that as well. But we're gonna add a little bit of rock work, nothing crazy. The plants will probably stay in here. Just a minor improvement to get a little bit more hardscaping in this tank for the fish. So we'll go ahead and see what Joanna does. I don't. I don't anticipate anything earth shattering in here. Just a quick little update. This is another tank that we're gonna update. This is a 75 gallon peacock tank. You can see here we have Ruby, she's in here. I know we're mixing our South Central American cichlids with our African cichlids and everybody tells you not to do that and we have done it a number of times in our fish room with zero issues. Of course we're going to keep an eye on this mix, especially the next couple weeks to make sure nobody's getting bullied, either her or the fish that are in here. And if there is a problem, we have plenty of opportunities and plenty of space to move things around to make it work. But this tank, I haven't shown this tank in quite some time. It needs a little bit of an update. Again, it's not gonna be anything earth shattering. We have a little bit more rock that we wanna to add to this tank. We'll get rid of this little fake plant over here on the right hand side. And again, Joanna's just gonna add a little bit, see what comes of it. Uh, again, it's just incremental improvements. We wanna make the tank look a little bit nicer, uh, just a little bit more enjoyable to look at. All right, everyone, take a look at what Joanna did to this 75 gallon tank. I think she did a fantastic job. When we first started, this was a tank that was originally for the Red Devils. It was a mess. They messed it up pretty good. They destroyed the fake plants and tore the gravel apart and did all kinds of stuff. But look how she was able to change it. I am really excited about this tank. Now we can see here, we have a lot of rock work. I like the rock work. Now the rocks, they came from a local heart, uh, landscaping place and what's nice about that is we paid like 30 cents a pound for rocks as opposed to the three or four dollars a pound you might pay at a pet store and got some really nice rocks so uh, very happy with the way the rocks turned out the piece of wood that you're seeing we actually got that a long time ago from a GCCA swap and I like that piece a lot all the plants were big box store tube plants. A lot of the plants that we use are the plants you'd see at a PetSmart or Petco and they come in the little plastic tubes. And the Anubias, the Java ferns that we've gotten, we just have really good luck with them. They're not super expensive. They're super convenient when you don't have somewhere else to go. They've been working for us in a lot of the tanks that we have. But you can see here they're looking good and they generally grow well for us right out of those tubes even though you know they weren't submerged in water for whatever reason they don't have any problems acclimating to our our water when we put them in tanks the sponge filters were fully cycled they were the sponge filters that were in here before we left the gravel in as well just because right now this is we didn't want to go ahead and, and take all that out that would have been a lot more work 
Uh, the lights that we've got right now are just two standard 48 inch fluorescent lights. We will upgrade those to LED lights at some point, but they were something that we had in the fish room. The, we had one fluorescent light on the tank already. We added another one and it's perfectly adequate for the plants that we're growing, which are all relatively low light, low, slow growing plants like the Anubias, like the Java fern. We do have a little bit of jungle val in the back. Hopefully that will grow out. Sometimes it's hit or miss with the jungle val. Sometimes it grows really well. As soon as we put it in the substrate, sometimes it dies back. We'll see. The fact that the substrate has got plenty of detritus underneath the gravel uh, will hopefully allow that jungle val to grow. So let's talk a little bit about the fish. Uh, the fish we're super excited about, some of them we haven't seen before. A while back, we picked up six geophagus, sorry, gymnogeophagus balzani. Those are really cool fish. They're gonna get to be about five or six inches or so, and they're gonna have that same kind of iridescence that a lot of the geophagus have. Now, the one issue that we're gonna have is they really would prefer to be on sand. I don't anticipate this being their long-term home. I think we're gonna have bigger and better things planned for them as they get older. So when they get to the size where it's appropriate to move them, we will probably do that. The other thing that we have in this tank, we moved the Rhinogobius henichuensis from a 10 gallon. They've been in a 10 gallon for a couple years. There was about eight or 10 of them in there. They get along really well. They're goofy little fish. We actually did a species profile on those fish. If you want to see more, I will put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. They're really cool, true freshwater gobies and they're just silly. And I'm hoping that they really enjoy this much larger tank. They seem to be. They seem to be enjoying the rocks. And again, they're goofy little fish. I think they're gonna add a lot of personality to this tank. The other thing that we did is we added a couple of very small, super red bristle nose. Their job is to keep the glass clean like they do in most all of our tanks. And I think they're gonna do a good job of that. And as they get older, they're gonna be really pretty looking. The other thing that we have in here is I just added one mystery snail. I call it the good luck mystery snail. So it's in here kind of roaming around. It's a gold mystery snail somewhere in here. So that's kind of what we've got for livestock. The gymnogeophagus are very small, as you can see. They're only about you know, maybe an inch or so. Uh, they were in a 10 gallon. They were in quarantine for the last probably six to eight weeks, uh, but now they are ready to go. So hopefully they enjoy this, uh, this escape a little bit more than the 10 gallon, which was just them and a little bit of uh, jungle bell. So I'm really happy with what Joanna did here, but we're not done. We've got a couple other tanks I want to show you. Uh, we have a 55 and another 75 where we add a little bit of rock. It's not nothing. It's nothing crazy, but just a little bit of improvement, incremental improvements around the fish room. All right, everyone. This is the 55 gallon geophagus top host tank. Joanna Reed did it. I like the way it looks. You can see she added a lot of rock work and a lot of fake plants. Sometimes you just have to use fake plants if you've got fish in a tank that are either digging and these geophagus love to dig. So pretty much any rooted type of plant is out because they're gonna dig them up. And we also have that random peacock cichlid which would eat various types of live plants as well. So we went ahead and we did the fake plant thing. I like it for what it is. Again, these fish, I'm not sure how much we're gonna really focus on breeding, although I did see them starting to take an interest. You can see the male, uh, he's starting to take an interest in that pile of rocks over there, and I saw both the male and that female that he's paired up with. Uh, they were over there kind of cleaning that off, so they may actually decide to lay eggs there, and if they do, I'll probably pull them. But I like what she did with the tank. It's a very big improvement over what it was. Do I prefer live plants? Yeah, I would prefer that, but again, with a tank like this, it doesn't always work out. I think it's a big improvement. This is what Joanna did to the 75 gallon peacock tank. This is a mixed tank. We've got a lot of different fish in here. It's kind of turned into a community tank. It used to be a breeding tank for red empress and dragon bloods. And then they started to hybridize and we get a lot of really cool OBs. So a lot of the OBs that you see in our fish room, including the one in this tank, these are hybrids between the dragon bloods and the red empress really pretty fish they show a lot of color i like our dragon bloods especially the males they get a nice deep red color there's kind of an oddball in here you will notice there is ruby uh, we needed a place for her i don't really want to get rid of her i like her uh, we lost roger as i mentioned but we didn't want to just go ahead and get rid of her to some other place so right now she's in this tank yes i'm aware that these are different continents of cichlids 
but it seems to work. So we've done it a number of times, a number of tanks, and the trick is picking, you know, matching the fish's personality with the tank. This was an established African tank, so there's probably not gonna be a whole lot of issues when it comes to her in this tank. She's She can hold her own, so she's not gonna be shy and get pushed around, but at the same time, this really is a peacock breeding tank, and so she's probably also not going to run the tank, uh, at least not in any way that's going to harm the other fish. And if it happens, if we see the, the situation is not working out properly, we'll deal with it. So Joanna added some rocks into this tank, and nothing crazy. Again, she just added a little bit more rocks, hid the wood a little bit, which I really like, and it, it just makes the tank look a little bit nicer incremental improvements again this is a tank where live plants are not going to be an option because of all these cichlids we've actually tried some even some hornwort and we at one point tried some jungle bell and the cichlids ate it uh, and that's just what they do so that's to be expected but it's also the reason why we're not going to put any plants in here and it's, it is a peacock tank and so you wouldn't typically see a lot of plants in a peacock tank anyway you can see some of the female dragon bloods are holding there's at least usually three or four females that are holding in this tank at all time uh, there's a red empress female that's holding in this tank as well so a lot of different fish are holding at all times so if we ever want dragon blood like fry we have a ready uh, available uh, group of them all right everyone so i hope you enjoyed those tanks i think the fish are gonna really like their new setting i'm really excited about that gymno geophagus balzani tank the 75 gallon planted tank i think that's going to develop into something special if you want to see more of these videos share subscribe and we'll see you in the next one